Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So bear with me because I'm a little under the weather today. We're going to try to get through this without sneezing. Now, if you don't like to think, don't watch this video. If you're easily triggered by alternative viewpoints, don't watch this video. I have no agenda. I have no uh, political uh, party that I'm s secretly grifting for. I have no uh, ideology that I'm grifting for. This is just one man trying to figure it out. By and large, I am a moderate, okay? So we've been conditioned by decades of Hollywood indoctrination to believe that the bad guys are always these stumbling idiots, these buffoons who always make mistakes. And we, the good guy, the hero, the He-Man, right? He-Man always finds some clever solution to deal with Skeletor. And so our nemeses are always depicted as making mistakes. But I encourage you to look at all the wars that have been waged in our name for the last many decades, whether it was Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, when we were told that we were winning, when we were told that everything was going well and that uh, and right up into the last moment, in fact, and I recall Biden saying distinctly a couple months before you know, leaving Afghanistan, that there was no way that that was going to happen. And of course, as we all know, it happened within 48 hours that the Taliban retook over. Same thing happened with the emergence of ISIS. Uh, the same thing happened in Vietnam when we were told uh, that the war was going great. And actually, there's an excellent video on YouTube of a, just a soldier, I think he, you know, a lowly, you know, uh, sub-official soldier who went to Vietnam and his world was flipped upside down when he realized that they weren't welcome there and that they weren't winning the war as was depicted in the media. So suffice it to say, there's good grounds to believe that that's the exact same thing that's happening here. Now, this video, it may get me blacklisted because I'm going to be saying some things which are perhaps a little controversial uh, because and it's not even so much that they're controversial, I don't think. It's just that there, there's this prevailing view right now, which has so much momentum. And uh, it's saddening because there's so many people who should be, you know, thinking more critically about the situation who, and who simply aren't. And now, can you imagine these high-ranking military generals in the Russian military, a country who's been invaded every which way from Sunday for the last 500 years, who spent decades wargaming this scenario that is unfolding right now. And you have all of these influencers on YouTube who think they got it figured out. Like, if only, <clears throat> like, and a lot of them are in the military, right? And a lot of them are like corporals or maybe sergeant or something like that. If only they had this one Western corporal or sergeant in the room with these, you know, these guys who've been wargaming this for the last 30 years who who understand the history of, of war within their region, who've had their country invaded several times. If only this one Call of Duty Reddit warrior, keyboard warrior, was within their ranks, in the room when they were planning out the war, that they wouldn't have made the same mistakes that they're making now. Like the hubris of that is, is astonishing. The, the idea that, <laughs> you know, and I'm thinking of someone in particular, because I, I watched Bo the Fifth Column's video where he's talking about how all the mistakes that they're making. And, and the, the fact of the matter is we don't know what the plan is. We still don't know what the plan is because there's a lot of things that simply don't make sense. And uh, this guy kind of has an opinion on everything. Like any anytime something comes up in the media, it's like, let's talk about this. Let's talk about that. I'm going to give you my opinion on, okay, fine. That's fair enough. That's what YouTube is for. But the, the notion that if only you were present in the room to, to point out these these errors which are seemingly so apparent to us that these mistakes wouldn't have been made. You know, like the idea of some purple-haired keyboard warrior talking about how uh, Russia messed up militarily in this situation is just, it's staggeringly arrogant and it's dangerous. That's the thing. And the real experts know how dangerous it is. There's plenty of independent journalists and uh, actual mercenaries who went over there and left because they realized that they were sold a lie, that it actually isn't going as good as we're saying it is, and that they got rude awakenings, just like the one uh, Reddit warrior who went over there, and I think he was there for all of a couple days, and his whole company was wiped out by a hypersonic missile, 
And that was in the far west of Ukraine. Okay. So, and then of course they tried to get out of there. They had to sneak out of the country because they realized that they weren't letting people leave. And they realized what without rule of law and excessive rule of law in a wartime scenario actually is when you don't have air support, when you're not, you know, the top dog, when you are actually the outmanned, outgunned, guerrilla warfare, asymmetrical insurgency. That's what it is. And that's what people are realizing. So just the, the arrogance of this, you know, for people to, to presume that the Russians are so stupid, that if only they had, you know, some lowly level conscript or corporal from uh, the US military in their ranks, that they would have figured this all out. You know, it's just, it's, it's dangerously naive. It's dangerous. And this is not saying anything against like, you know, the US military. And uh, I mean, this is a different war, guys. This is a war which we've never seen since World War II, like tank battles. Like you've never seen that for the longest time. We've never seen that in any war that the United States has been involved in. Maybe you've seen that a little bit, you know, in the, the early parts of Iraq. Um, and I'm sure there was some other like small conflicts that, that amounted to, you know, deaths measured in the dozens, but not in the large scale that we're seeing right now. So this is an altogether a different conflict. And uh, this is something that you need to understand. Uh, this is maneuver warfare because we're so used to just lighting things up from a distance from our naval vessels or from, you know, surface surface uh, missiles um, or from the air that, you know, we forget that when you are fighting a formidable force, you have to employ other tactics, especially if you don't want to completely obliterate places. Now, here's where we're going to get into some theoretical stuff, because there's a lot of things that just do not make sense. But there's a lot of things that also make sense. Consider, if you will, the first thing that doesn't make sense and that nobody is really talking about. The fact of the matter is, if they wanted to cut off the power, the water, the heat, and any uh, other uh, utilities that were powering the capital of Kiev, they could have. Why, oh why, did Russia permit Zelensky to continue to broadcast himself to the world? Now, I'm sure there could have been some satellites, and yes, there was Starlink and things of that nature. Uh, he still probably would have got the word out. But why let him have free reign in doing so? You know, and, and why is it that this massive convoy, which was ass to ass on the, on the highway, like completely unstrategic, right? Like, for, at least from our perspective. Um, why is it that that convoy to Kiev had all the eyes on it? Meanwhile, the actual, the, the uh, progress that the Russians made was in the south. Like throughout that entire time that that was happening, Mariupol was getting bombarded. <clears throat> okay, the southern, you know, part of uh, Ukraine was getting overrun by the Russians. And there was no attention paid towards that. So we have to ask ourselves why, you know, it, and, and this is where the, the idea that it might have been a diversionary, diversionary tactic can kind of hold a lot of weight because everybody's looking at that 40-mile convoy into Kiev, which really didn't really do a whole heck of a lot. And remember that the thing is, is that people always forget that if they wanted to, and this bears repeating, they could have easily wiped that city off the map. Obviously, they didn't do it for a reason. Thankfully, they didn't do it because a lot of innocent people would have died, obviously. Um, but they could have done it from a distance and they didn't do it. Why didn't they do it? There's a big, you know, that's a big, important piece of the puzzle that not enough people are asking. Why the hell didn't they do it? Clearly, there's a reason why they didn't do it. Now, isn't it convenient that let's say there was a uh, there was a video that was put out of Zelensky trying to tell one of these Azov um, adjacent guys in the south to disarm. He was trying to give him an order. Like it was like a video of you know him as president trying to tell these guys that they need to you know stand down or disarm or, or giving them some kind of order. I can't remember exactly what it was. And they basically laughed in his face. 
So you're talking about a country who was likely on the brink of civil war, okay? And you can say that, okay, only 2 to 3% of uh, the, the military was infiltrated with these uh, fascist types, but 2 to 3% is all it takes, and 2 to 3% is a lot, okay? Especially if you're highly ideologically, uh, um, if you have a lot of uh, fervor and uh, passion about what you're doing, you know, it, it only takes a, a small percentage of any population to really create upheaval and cause a revolution. So that the notion that it's only 2% is, is stupid. I mean, if it was only one or two random guys who were immediately, you know, brought to, to justice or whatever, or discipline, then that would be another story. But you're talking about whole battalions who wear actual insignia, okay? So clearly, Ukraine was on the path to civil war. Well, how convenient is it that the capital was left virtually unscathed, even though there was this convoy, which everybody was focused on, while the South was getting completely annihilated. Mariupol was annihilated. They have completely destroyed that place. They have decimated, not decimated, they have wiped out that military. There's still a few holdouts. And for some reason, there, there apparently is attempts to get people out of there um, they're, they're supposedly hiding something there. I, I don't know if that's true. But regardless, you know, it starts to look like, it starts to be very convenient that, um, you know, Zelensky has been allowed to do what he's been allowed to do, which is great. He can garner support for the war from the rest of the world and help out his people. But what, what interest does that serve the Russians to do that? Why wouldn't they have cut him off? I mean, you really got to ask that question because it's very important. Meanwhile, his opposition within the country has been virtually wiped out. Okay, you see where I'm going with this? His opposition has been annihilated now. So now he doesn't have to worry about a civil war. Obviously, he's got to worry about the Russians. Okay, now some people have suspected that he, he's been kept alive. And what people need to understand is that um, Russians have a lot of human intelligence okay they're not the most sophisticated perhaps in terms of or as sophisticated i should say as like the cia in terms of their you know satellite capabilities and stuff like that but they have a lot of they have a good human intelligence network and you know the ukraine is rife with russia i mean i don't know what the exact percentage is but a high percentage of ukrainians are russian speaking okay and so it's very easy to blend in. I mean, they all use the same equipment. It's, it's essentially, it's, it's kind of like a civil war in a way. <clears throat> so you got to wonder, okay, why is he still around? Why are they allowing him to, to do what he's doing? To, to have Boris, you know, that the president or prime minister of the UK come there for a visit and all these other prime ministers come there for a visit. It just seems weird that Russia would allow this when they could easily have taken out the capability for that to ever happen in the first place. So some people have speculated that they want him alive so that he can officiate any sort of peace deal and arrangement uh, so that, you know, they can have, so that the people of the West can be appeased, Western Ukraine that is, be appeased, and to, if they have a leader who has signed on to something, that, you know, it'll, it'll have that kind of pull. Um, that's what some people have speculated. Now, I mean, if we were to put on our tinfoil hats for a second, you know, and, and uh, just imagine certain scenarios. And, and like when I do this, I'm not saying that this is, this is what I believe necessarily, but you got to ask these questions because these things don't make sense. Like it doesn't make any sense that, that this massive convoy to Kiev was virtually, you know, just... It was really just, it seemed like a decoy because it really didn't do a whole heck of a lot. You know, there was some incursions made in, in various places, but compared to the destruction, like what the other hand was doing in the South, you know, was complete annihilation of those forces. And now they're going into the East to finish that part of the job. So why are they leaving this line of communication open? Is it just so that they have a path to negotiation? Because clearly if they wanted to take him out, they could have taken him out. So it makes me wonder. You know, it makes me wonder. And you got to understand that uh, 
the Israelis and Zelensky, for, for starters, Zelensky is a Jewish guy, right? We all know that. And so he, you can't tell me that a, a guy who has had family members in concentration camps is going to like the Azov Battalion and what they represent. Clearly he doesn't, okay? And clearly the Russians, having liberated the concentration camps, are, you know, Israel is forever indebted to them and probably will always, you know, be their friend for that particular reason alone, for doing that one thing. Um, and then you have to wonder, like, is there some sort of double agent stuff going on here where it, it just, it, there's a lot of things that, that don't make sense. Now, I know that uh, the prime minister or the president, is it, of Israel has a very close line of communication between both Putin and Zelensky. And if anybody is going to somehow be able to resolve this issue, if anybody can phone both within the span of the same hour, it could be him, right? And you just have to wonder, you know, did Putin just do him a favor in a lot of ways? But now, of course, this comes at great cost to the Russians. And so is it that, you know, is Zelensky really the Western, the, uh, the Western hero that he's been making out to be? Or is he actually some kind of like double agent? Because think about it, like, they could have taken him out, they're not, he's now going to be getting <clears throat> all this uh, Western support, right? Probably going to be getting Western weapons, which, you know, can be reverse engineered by the Russians. And, yeah, I don't know. I, and like I say, I, I, this is kind of where I'm stuck, right? This is where I don't know exactly, but I do know that a lot of these people who think they have it figured out, oh, the Russians just drop the ball and they don't know what they're doing. And you, you don't know anything about the terrain. You don't know anything about the, the history. All you know is, you know, call of duty. I'm going to phone in an airstrike. And, you know, it's just, it's the, the height of arrogance to presume that a country who's built their military around this, this very, this, this geographical uh, battle in the world like this is their this is what their military is built for fighting in that specific region you know to think that they <laughs> that, that just that they made the most bonehead of mistakes I mean there might have been logistical errors but there's a lot of questions that aren't answered why aren't they bringing the majority of their army to bear you know there's a lot of things we don't know so because they're not they're not using the majority of their military they're not using the majority of their air force. They're not using a lot of their new equipment. They are preserving this for some reason. Now, perhaps they don't want to see it confiscated and fall into the hands of, you know, the the West, so that they can reverse engineer it and basically uh, capitalize on those years of research and development that have been invested into it. And basically, that's that's what happens when you can reverse engineer things: is you're basically stealing years of R and D. Um, but something is not right. That's, that's all I know is something. And anybody who thinks that they've got it figured out like these, that these, uh, you know, soldiers who maybe they've done a tour or something and they go and they make a YouTube channel and now they're experts on, you know, all the mistake mistakes that Russia has made. <laughs> you know, it's just like, I, I cannot, I cannot put too much stock in that. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Uh, I guess we'll know if I struck a nerve here because the troll farms will come out again and they will completely inundate this video with negative comments like they have done in the past. Let's see what happens. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned. we got a lot more prepping-related content coming in the not-so-distant future. Take care, guys.